Hey guys, thanks for joining me here on Tanks and Fish. Uh, today I want to talk about uh, how to set up an aquarium. As you can see behind me, I already got one set up. Uh, just recently set up, so it's a little foggy in there. Apologize for that. Uh, I got two little guppies swimming around in there right now. What I want to do is I want to show you guys by going through the equipment one at a time. Uh, it's going to be very brief, but I want to give you a kind of an idea of all the equipment you will need uh, to get an aquarium set up. Uh, there's going to be a part two of showing you what you actually need for the water chemistry. Uh, the number one killer for new hobbyists on um, why their fish are dying is because they don't have the water chemistry set up properly. Uh, so please check out both videos so we can basically show you how to get uh, successful results. Uh, so let's get into the equipment. Uh, the first thing that we're going to need is some type of filter. Here you can see I have a hang on back. Uh, it's a little dirty. I've used it for a couple of years now. Basically a hang on back is the most common filter you're going to find in any pet shop no matter where you go. The back of the hang on back has a big cavity uh, for media to go in so it can actually filter your water with beneficial bacteria. Um, what you basically don't want to do on one of these is when you first purchase them, they come with filter pads in there uh, full of carbon that they tell you to change out every 30 days. Uh, that's the number one common mistake that people in the hobby do when they first get into it is they switch out those pads every 30 days. Um, I actually did that when I first started the hobby. Uh, later I learned that it's actually better to not even use those pads. Um, any pet shop that you go to also sells sponges uh, for filters. You can basically buy some of those sponges, cut it down a size, stuff it into the back of the hang on back. That'll do you more good than actually swapping out those pads. Aside from that hang on back, the second most popular filter, uh, you can probably see it here. I hope you can. It's a sponge filter. Um, I'll probably put a little picture up uh, so you can see what they actually look like. Uh, those are very beneficial uh, filters. Uh, they can last you years and years and years. And the only thing you need for them is an air pump. Uh, sponge filters are very good, easy to clean out. You just wring it out in your aquarium water uh, while you're doing your water changes and you're good to go. It's good to go for another few months. Internal filters. Internal filters usually just hook up to the inside of your aquarium. You plug them in and they filter your water with some type of sponge in there. Kind of just like a hang on back but internally. Um, those are pretty good as well. Depending on what kind of tank you're setting up, you want to put the appropriate filter in there uh, based on what you like. Again, everything is subjective. Uh, you can do whatever you want. The next thing I want to talk about you can see here is going to be the substrate. Lining the bottom of your tank, you need some type of substrate, whether it be gravel, sand, um, crushed coral, uh, aragonite, whatever you want to use, uh, go ahead and use it. So whatever gravel you choose, uh, just make sure you choose some type of appropriate substrate for whatever fish you plan on keeping in there. Uh, the next thing you can see is a thermometer. You want to keep the temperature in your tank pretty steady all year round. Uh, thermometer will help you do that. Uh, make sure the temperature stays consistent with it. Um, what's going to help you make sure the water stays warm enough is going to be a heater. If you can see it back here hanging on the back of the wall here. Uh, the heater is basically, they're rated for the aquarium size that you have. If you read every box, I always suggest go one step above that to make sure uh, your aquarium heater is heating everything properly. Um, worst or best case scenario, you can actually buy two. Uh, in case one ever fails, you have a backup one ready to go. Or let's say you go on vacation, one fails. While you're gone, the second one will be able to pick up the slack and make sure everything's on, on point till you get back. Next thing after that, I want to show you is the hood. Uh, the hood's already on here, as you can tell. Uh, some hoods already come with built-in lights, so you can just uh, switch the bulbs to whatever you want, and you're good to go. There's glass lids you can put on there and buy your own lights separately, uh, depending on what you're going for. Always make sure you have some type of lid on your aquarium. Uh, fish do jump, and if you don't have a lid on here, you're going to end up walking home to a bunch of dead fish on the floor. So just make sure you have some type of hood, some type of lid on your aquarium uh, to help keep those little guys in there. Next thing I want to show you is an air pump. An air pump uh, is good for pumping air into your aquarium, uh, whether you have a bubbler hooked up to it or if you have a sponge filter hooked up to it. Uh, just make sure you get the right rated air pump for your aquarium. You'd want to get a 10 gallon uh, aquarium air pump into a 250 gallon aquarium tank. That's just not going to work very well for you. So just make sure you get the right rated air pump uh, for your tank. 
Um, the next things I want to show you is airline tubing to get the air to where whatever item you're hooking it up to, whether it's a sponge filter or bubbler. Uh, here I have a bubbler. Uh, what bubblers are good for um, is something sponge filters already do. They basically create surface agitation to get oxygen into your aquarium. Uh, you can achieve that with a bubbler or you can achieve that with a sponge filter. Uh, that's one of the benefits of a sponge filter uh, that I find attractive and that's one of the reasons I usually go with them. So the next thing after that I want to show you is a water changer. There's very many var variations of this. Uh, there's one that actually hooks up to your sink, uh, made by Python or Aquion, um, so you don't have to lug around uh, pails of uh, water. Um, you just hook it right up and basically drains your aquarium, fills it back up without back breaking work. Uh, if you can't uh, budget one of those in, uh, here's an affordable option. Uh, it's a quick water changer, comes with a little pump. Um, you just need a five gallon bucket with it to dump your water into and you can do your water changes that way. It doesn't matter what you use, uh, just make sure you have something to make it easier on you. You don't want to go in there with a small little cup trying to empty out a you know, 100 gallon aquarium. It's going to take you all day. So just make sure you have something um, to make it easier on yourself. You're going to be doing water changes quite frequently. Why not have something to uh, make it easier on yourself? Next thing I want to talk about is going to be a net. You want to have several nets available um, for whatever size fish that you have. Just make sure you have the appropriate net. You don't want to have a small little net uh, for a big fish. It's just not going to work for you. Just make sure you have the right uh, net for the fish that you plan on keeping uh, now and in the future. Next thing after that is uh, a scrubber. Basically a cleaning tool when your glass gets dirty on the inside of the aquarium. Sometimes it can be a little uh, hard to just wipe it off with your hand. You're gonna need some type of scrubber to get in there and really uh, get everything off your glass. Uh, pretty affordable. Um, you can actually use pretty much just about anything. Uh, you can go to your local store and just get a sponge, get in there and just clean it with the sponge. Uh, this just makes it easier if you have deep aquariums, helps you get in there and really uh, reach for uh, the little crevices and whatnot that you normally can't reach. The next thing I want to talk about is some type of water conditioner. You need some type of water conditioner for your water, tap water, well water, whatever water you use, uh, usually contains some type of chemical in it, uh, something that you don't want in your aquarium. Get the proper water conditioner to get that out. Um, they usually come in bottles that have little caps that you can measure on. I usually just pour it into a spray bottle. Uh, what it sprays out, I measure it and basically guides me on how much I sh how many sprays uh, per tank I need. Uh, pretty simple, I like this system, um, works great for me. And the last thing I wanna talk about is some type of test kit. Uh, doesn't matter if you're old, new into the hobby, everyone's going to have a test kit. It's highly recommended that you test your water, especially when you're first starting out, you're going to be checking it pretty much every other day. Uh, have a test kit ready for yourself. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be this. Uh, it could be the little test strips. It can be whatever brand, as long as it does the job consistently and does it right. Um, again, it's, it's going to be used almost daily for you. Make sure you always have one on hand, especially if something goes wrong, you need to test your water, uh, have one handy. Always invest in one to uh, have. All right guys, so we pretty much just gave you a quick rundown of all the equipment you're gonna need for setting up an aquarium. Um, apologize if it was a little too fast for some. Uh, I'll put a list of all the equipment that you'll need um, in the description below of everything that we just covered. Um, stay tuned for our next uh, part of this. It's gonna be the nitrogen cycle. We're gonna show you basically what the nitrogen cycle is. Uh, that way you can be successful in your fish hobby and make sure you keep your fish alive. So we'll catch you guys on the next video. Uh, thanks again for joining us here today on Tanks and Fish. And again, we'll see you next time. Bye.